Um, so hi, my name is Dragon Ding, and today I'll be presenting my keystone, More Than Just a Game, Understanding the Effects of Gaming on Mental Health. Within this presentation, I will discuss the rise of the video game industry, acknowledge existing literature about the effects of gaming, and propose the hypothesis that video games can be beneficial to many people and should be further developed as both a source of entertainment and a educational or mental health resource. And so before I talk about my research specifically, I wanted to, I guess, offer some more recent implications that video games, uh, about the effects that video games are having on people's lives. And so as most of you know, or as all of you know, COVID-19 arrived in the US in January of 2020. And as the virus spread, people were forced to, like forced with the challenge of surviving a global pandemic. Um, this meant not attending school, we're going to work, being unable to visit friends or family and being unable to attend regular public activities. Um, people really had to kind of create a whole new, whole, a whole new lifestyle from the confines of one's home. And so this has been difficult for many people and Professor Sandro Galea, a dean at our very own School of Public Health, found that depression rates in the US have tripled from 8.5% pre-pandemic to 27.8% in the September of last year. Um, and so with the inability to partake in outdoor activities and public activities, much of the general population has turned to video games as a way to keep themselves occupied and sane during the pandemic. Games such as Animal Crossing New Horizons and Among Us have rapidly rose to popularity as people have used those platforms as a way to reconnect with friends and escape the bleak reality of the world. And, but not only did video games kind of integrate themselves into the general population's lives, people have started to use video games as a new platform for politics, sports, and education. So as live sports such as basketball and soccer suffered from travel restrictions, um, networks such as Fox and ESPN have turned to esports such as NBA 2K and eNASCAR to appease their audiences. Uh, AOC encouraged young people to vote by hosting a, an, an Among Us stream with a couple of other famous streamers, which attracted hundreds of thousands of viewers. Um, students from BU even created a Minecraft server known as Quarantine University to host a virtual graduate graduation for the class of 2020. But however, even though video games have grown really quickly and integrated into many people's lives, um, a number of the population still remains adamant that video games cause violence, um, are harmful to a child's development, and are a waste of time. Ex-POTUS Donald Trump and podcast host Joe Rogan both continue to blame video games for things such as mass shootings and why people can't be successful in life. Vox says that blaming video games for real world violence or any kind of real world violence is a longstanding cultural and political habit whose origins date back to 1970s. Even though much of the scientific literature says that video games are often not bad for one's mental health or the cause of violence, um, this negative stigma continues to exist. So through my research, I wanted to explore if these negative stereotypes were true and if video games truly did impact one's mental health negatively. To do this, I broke my research into two parts. First, I wanted to explore the quantitative relationship between video game habits and the level of one's depression. And second, I interviewed five individuals to create a more holistic picture of what their relationship with video games looks like. So to dive more specifically into the quantitative aspect, I created a series of questions about one's perceptions and habits around video games and compared it to the Beck Depression Inventory which is a standardized 21 item self-report rating inventory that measures characteristic attitudes and symptoms of depression. Um, originally, I was gonna do make gaming habits and perception my independent uh, variable, but with through further discussion with my advisor, we decided to, fl decided to flip it. And so the BDI became the independent variable because there is no current existing gaming scale that measured mental health. And so, the data was collected from students belonging to multiple universities and gaming organizations. Um, I sent out a Google form that included questions about people's gaming habits and the BDI. The final sample size was 93 and only included people who played video games. Uh, and I used SPSS to conduct a t-test um, on to, cut, to analyze my final data. And so while some questions have been excluded, um, I wanted to focus mainly on 
if people used video games to cope with their emotional pain. And as you can see, because the p-value is less than 0.001, um, my research found, the, my hypothesis was supported. And because you know, so many people during the pandemic have started a podcast, I decided to start one too. Um, I mean, joke, jokes aside, I found that simply analyzing quantitative data wasn't enough to accurately understand one's, um, the, uh, the effect the video game had on one's mental health. And so to kind of take the next step, I decided to interview five individuals um, about the impact in gaming has had on their lives. And so while I had prepared specific questions originally, I found that letting the conversations be more free flowing, really let the interviewee deep dive into what they wanted to talk about. Um, and so between the five people, each of them talked about different things and um, the interviews were recorded through Zoom and uploaded to YouTube. And so I'll now play a clip of my interview with John, but to offer some context, in this specific conversation, John and I discussed how he uses video games as a way to relax um, we compared video games to other entertainment mediums and his thoughts on the stigma and judgment around gamers. I'm dragging, I'm sorry, I don't think we're hearing the audio. <gasps> Oh, that's not good. Okay, let me stop sharing. I think I have to reshare, sorry. Okay. I love video now? games a lot. Got it. Yes, good. So, Thank you. I, I want to preface whatever I'm about to say with that. But video games, unless you find like you can generate a revenue from video games, you can generate a living, like you can be a streamer, esport. Uh, Esport, or uh, you can develop video games. You can really generate. You can really make a productive living out of your video game passion. By all means, do it. I am not by any means disparaging any sort of video game related careers. That being said, if you don't see yourself in a video game related career at all, you don't think that that's ever a reality that you can really realize. Then do then know that video games are a source of entertainment, and that mm. at the end of the day is what they ultimately are. Video games are like Netflix to other people. Are, are mm. like crocheting other people. You know, it's a source of, it's how we unwind and how we unwind as human beings. And in a productive society as, a, as ours, if we didn't have sources of entertainment or ways that we could take our minds off a really hard day at work or whatever we were doing, it, we'd, have a, we'd have a global pandemic of burnout. And Okay. Oh, I, I love sorry. video games a sorry. lot. Um, and so through e though, though each interviewee talked about different things, some common themes showed up. And so they all found that video games can be beneficial to their mental health and for relaxation, um, that people often use video games to fulfill something they're missing in their actual lives. And that as long as video games are used in moderation and like, in a controlled fashion, there will be often more positive effects than negative effects. Um, and so though while both my quantitative and qualitative data research uh, data yielded findings that supported my hypothesis, um, there are some limitations to what I was studying. And so first, the lack of a standardized gaming skill that measured mental health specifically uh, makes it difficult to understand if video games truly do impact mental health. Um, second, because the sample size was limited, it made it difficult to, uh, to be more specific within my data analysis and make these findings more applicable to the general population. And finally, because I want to see if video games can affect similarly to prescribed medications, a neurological analysis should be done, which I didn't have the resources to access. Um, but as a video game, as the video game industry continues to grow, more and more uses are being found. And so on June 15th, 2020, Achille Interactive's Endeavor RX, uh, their, that, that it became the first FDA cleared prescription uh, medication for attention in children with ADHD. And so this video game kind of is pushing the forefront of medical treatment. Um, both military and doctors and psychologists are researching ways to integrate virtual reality into treatment and training. And finally, companies such as Healthy Gamer and Rise Above the Disorder are trying to offer resource, mental health resources to the gaming communities. 
And so while this growth continues, I hope that my research will be part of the movement to combat the negative stigma around gaming and show that video games can become a key component in, oh wait, oops, my bad. Um, can become a key component in one's social, mental, and professional development. Thanks for listening.